folks, Josh Hager here at Beardy Bee Works again. I've uh, got a pretty good habit of getting my cart before my horse. Um, that's kind of what I've done with this channel this year. I kind of decided um, just about two or three weeks ago that I'd start this YouTube channel. Well, we're well into the swing of the beekeeping year, and you've seen some videos of mine where I've caught some swarms. I'm up to nine swarms for this year, but I haven't showed you how I catch these swarms, and that's pretty important. So I'm going to make a little video here to show you what I do and what I think makes uh, swarm catching for myself successful. I can't take credit for most of this information that I'm about to give you here. Um, I've talked to a lot of different people that's got a lot more uh, experience and, and catch a lot more swarms than I do, but it's worked for me. So we'll get started. The, kind of the standard swarm trap is your 40 liter five frame swarm trap. And that's what this is right here. Uh, if you've read The uh, Honey Bee Democracy, that book goes into a lot of detail about swarm trapping, swarm behavior, how they make their decisions. It's a, it's a very interesting book. Now, we all know that a lot of times the, you know, the scientific experiments don't fully relate uh, to what we do in the field, but there's a lot of good information there, and I'll talk a little more about that in a second. So to describe this 40, miller, 40 uh, liter swarm trap, there's a lot of plans for these on, online, and I can, I'll, I'll put a, a link in the description of this video for you for one like this. They, uh, of course, it's just, a, it's just a box. It's the same width as a five frame new, but it's deeper. On this here, I put a, uh, a little gate here. It's got a few options. You open it wide open, give them some air, or you can put a queen excluder on there. The only, the only two I really use is the open and then the closed. The queen excluder won't do you a whole lot of good on a swarm because your queen has shrank quite a bit in, uh, in preparation for swarming and she'll fit through an excluder. A lot of people think that excluders will help from their, their queens from swarming or their bees from swarming, but when those queens shrink down in preparation for swarming, they can slide right through an excluder. There's a lot of queens that are laying, or some queens that are laying that can fit through an excluder. So that doesn't really hold up. In my swarm traps, I'll put three combs in the, in the five frame. I'll put two combs of undrawn foundation. These are acorn double waxed foundations. And then I'll put what I call my bait comb. So this is some old brood comb. Um, this one's a little rougher than what I like. It's got some double comb in here uh, where Bees can hide, especially queens if you're trying to find them. That's why I pulled this out of my operation. I try not to use, I try to put something in there good enough for them to keep in the hive with them, because this is gonna be the first place they lay. Now, if my, if my queen that I catch lays in this, um, I'll, I'll let them cap it and I'll pull it off to the side once it's capped. And once that brood emerges out, I can pull this back out of there. But you want this, this is very important. Um, the pheromones and the smells on this old brood comb uh, probably probably helps you just as much as any lure that you can put in there. So if you've got old dark comb, it's very important to put it in there. If you don't have a lot of it, you can even, you know, I could tear this comb off this frame, rub it inside the box, throw a little in the bottom, and that, that will help as well. But I like to give them a place to lay, get that queen fired back up and laying just as soon as possible. So I put that frame in the center, and then I'll put the, the two undrawn frames on each side of that. Now it doesn't take a swarm very long to uh, make a mess in here. I try to check my swarm traps at least once a week. Um, if not, you know, if I can't get to them every every week, at least you know a week and a half, I try not to let them go two weeks. If a swarm moves in this and you leave them alone for two weeks, it'll you know we did a video um, a few days ago my buddy caught a swarm and they built off the bottom. Uh, you want to get these things hived up as soon as possible so they don't make a mess. And on top of that, you, you might be missing swarms. So if you catch a swarm in this trap and leave it hanging for two weeks, there's a good possibility you might have missed another swarm, a secondary cast or a swarm from another hive. So I try to get them down as soon as I know I've got a swarm, get them down, get them hived up, and get a trap right back up. So I use a few things as lures couple things as lures on these traps besides the cone. Last
last year I caught about 12 swarms, maybe a few more, I, I lost count, uh, by just using lemongrass oil. You can get this at your beekeeping supply store. Um, a lot of people sell this stuff, probably even get it at Walmart. It's just an essential, essential oil, and it's lemongrass oil. The way I did this last year, I took Q-tips, and I would uh, dab some on a little bit on the, each end of the Q-tip. I would take my top off, rub it across the top of my frames, rub it around the entrance, and drop the Q-tip in the back of the box. And that seemed to work pretty well. You do have to be careful with lemongrass oil, though, because you can't get too much in the, in the trap, and it actually will repel the bees. I, I had one um, trap last year that I missed a swarm on. I came and checked it, and it had been a little bit, a week or two since I'd been there, and there was a little piece of comb on the bottom of the trap where they had clustered and started to build comb, but they just didn't move in. And I would suspect that I put a little too much lemongrass oil in there and that, uh, you know, it, it repelled the swarm. So Harold Sanford is a gentleman in our area here that is very successful uh, swarm trapping. I think he catches 50 to 100 swarms a year. And um, he, he showed me this trick right here, and I really think it's a game changer. What this is, what this is right here is just a little scientific uh, pipette like you'd use in a high school or college experiment. I'll take the pipette, put it down in my lemongrass oil, and pull up about a half mil to three quarter mil of lemongrass oil. And then I'll take that, once I got my lemongrass oil in there, fold it over. You can do this a couple ways. You can put, a, you can put zip ties, a small zip tie on it, hold it shut. I just use a uh, push pin, like from a bulletin board, and so I'll take my push pin, I'll put it in the through where it, it has been over, and then I just place that in the back of my box. The lemongrass oil will permeate that thin plastic, and it gives you kind of like a time release on that lemongrass oil, so you don't have to get in these boxes every week. We think that that's good probably for around a month, give or take. So that saves you some time checking your swarm traps because you don't have to pull the tops off of them, rebate them, and put everything back together. The other thing I do in conjunction with that, this year I started using Swarm Commander. And I, I had really put this off. This stuff's like 30 bucks a bottle. And I thought, man, if I'm catching them with lemongrass oil, why do I need to spend that extra money? But the same guy, Harold Sanford, brought up a good point. If you're going to go to all the trouble of swarm trapping, you might as well increase your odds all you can. This is definitely not going to decrease your odds. It's going to help you, if anything. Like I said, a bottle of this swarm commander is about $30. But if you catch one swarm, it pays, it'll pay you back. You know, a nucleus colony is about 200 bucks. So, you know, it's not, it's not that much money when you really think about it. So I've got a couple different types of these 40 liters. These are pretty cheap. It's just got a little top that you screw on. But it's kind of, it's kind of cumbersome. I don't have any right now, but they're all hanging. But I've got some that I've built like telescopic lids for that I like better just because they're easier to get on and off um, and they protect the, the open edges of the wood a little better. I think they're going to hold up a little longer. Now that's kind of the standard method. I'm going to show you something else. I'm going to show you how to make a swarm trap with stuff you might already have laying around, just some extra equipment. So on a swarm trap, we want that extra depth in the bottom. That makes the cavity feel larger, and it also gives the bees a place to cluster when they move in. They like to move in, hang off the bottom, and then move up through the frames. So I've got some feeder shims that I built last year to feed some sugar to some bees. I take three or four of those and stack those up on my bottom board. And then I'll set a box on top And then I'll, I'll do a, similar to what I do here. I'll put one frame of brood comb and two frames of undrawn foundation. I don't like to fill up my swarm traps. I like to give them plenty of room. Now you do it, like I said, you have to check them on a regular basis. If you leave this all season long and catch a swarm early on, you're gonna have a mess in here and you're basically gonna have to do a cutout. But I like to, I check mine on a pretty regular basis so I'm not too worried about that. 
Um, I do, one thing I didn't mention over there, because I don't fill the box up with frames, I put small nails on each side of my frames that I do have in there. That way when you're moving the swarm trap around, your frames don't slide around and fall out. You don't have to worry about readjusting things once you put it in the tree or wherever you're gonna put it. So I do like to do that. So once I have my frames in here, I pin my, uh, my lemongrass oil and my pipette back here. And then I didn't mention a while ago, I think, but I, I use a swarm commander to bait the entrance of the hive. So I'll, on this trap, I'll put some here. And on this trap, I'll put a, I will put an entrance reducer in here because through the book, Honeybee Democracy, they have learned that bees, you know, they prefer certain heights in the trees. They prefer certain cavity sizes, certain entrance uh, openings, things like that. So I'll reduce this down to, you know, two and a half inches of entrance. And then I'll put some of my swarm commander at that entrance right there. And then you just put your top on. And what I do, I just wrap, I just wrap a ratchet strap around this to hold it all together. Tie a little handle in the loose end of your ratchet strap. And you can just pick that up and move it wherever you want. Uh, some folks really like to hang these, and you can hang them. I uh, ran a ratchet strap across the other way, so you have one running this way and this way. And you can use the loose ends to make uh, a place to tie a rope to. Tie, tie the loose ends together, tie your rope to it, and you can hoist it up in a tree. Um, that's the safest way to do it. Swarm trapping can be kind of dangerous. Uh, if you're climbing a ladder to, like, to screw one of these to a tree, or I set a lot of these in tree stands, climbing a ladder um, of a tree stand. So you do have to be very careful putting these up. It, it can be kind of dangerous. So once I get this all together, like I said, I put my strap around it, and I typically set these in a tree stand. We'll talk a little bit about um, trap placement. There's kind of uh, three things I look for whenever I'm uh, placing my trap. Um, I really like to see water somewhere close by, either lowlands like swampy areas, ponds, creeks, ditches, something like that. There seems to be a strong association with the wetlands and bees. The other thing is I like to look for big, big timber. If you can find a stand of mature timber, there's probably going to be a lot of cavity um, sites, you know, natural cavities for bees, and you might have a lot of, a lot more, a few more wild bees in that area. Uh, the other thing is edge. I like to find an edge where the bees are likely to travel for navigation, a, a fence line, a tree line, and you know, with that you get some shade. It's not. It's not as important early on in the trap, trapping season, but we get on it for us later in the trapping season, like late May into June. Um, that shade is very important. You really almost need full shade in that time of year. Earlier in the year, you can get away with having some uh, sun, sunlight hitting that trap so it doesn't get too hot. But once temperatures start to rise, you need almost full shade for these traps to increase your, your catch rate. Um, the other thing, I guess a fourth thing that I look for is catalpa trees. There you go again, I don't have anything to back this up. There may be something out there, but I've seen a strong association with catalpa trees and honeybee swarms or, or bees in catalpa trees. I don't know if they just naturally have cavities that bees like or, or more likely to have a cavity for bees or if there's something about the tree. But if you can look for water, uh, big timber, edges, and Catalpa trees, those, those four things right there will really help you out and increase your um, swarms, number of swarms that you catch. Along with trap location, we also talk about the height of your trap. Uh, going back to the honeybee democracy, research shows about 15 feet is the ideal height uh, to catch a swarm. I don't put it hardly any of my traps up that high. Some of my stuff in my tree stands are 15 to 20 feet. I have a couple that I pull up with ropes, which I haven't had much success with. Those are uh, 15 to 20 feet. I put most of my swarm traps, like this style right here, I put most of those up six foot step ladder. So they might be you know, seven to eight feet off the ground. I, I've caught, last year I put my, my traps up with a two foot step ladder. So they might have been you know, six to seven feet off the ground. So I don't know that the height is that important. The other factors I listed before, you know, the brood comb, the lemongrass oil, swarm commander, 
site location, those things are more important, I think, than you know the height that you uh, put your swarm trap. I didn't mention it a while ago, but the idea behind this style trap here is that you increase your volume. This is probably more like a 60 to uh, 70 liter trap, I would say, just guessing. You're more likely to catch larger swarms in this. That's what we found for using these. I caught some bigger swarms. I caught a, an eight frame swarm in one of these this year. And you know, about about three, two to four frames of bees is an average size swarm for this smaller 40 liter, liter trap here. And so this trap here, you're just more likely to catch a larger swarm in. And also, I think I've had, I just have a few of these out and compared to these. So percentage-wise, I've caught more bees in these traps this year since I started using using those than I have in these. I think I've caught uh, four swarms out of the nine in these. I have about 13 of these traps out and about eight of these, uh, seven or eight of these traps out. So you can see I, I've caught a lot more swarms proportionally in these traps than I have in these. So I, I, I do think this is a better uh, swarm trap like I said, you you might already have this stuff anyway, so it you know it's worked well for me. I hope this uh, helps you all out and fills in some of the blanks uh, from where I've been catching swarms and showing you videos. If there's something that I haven't covered or something you want to see more about swarm trapping, just uh, let me know. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, uh, please do so and uh, keep watching us. Hit the like button if you like it. Uh, we've also got a Facebook page. You can. Uh, Check our Facebook page out. Thanks for watching.